Okay, so these things right here, they're pretty dangerous. So I was riding one, I leaned forward just a tad, and I flipped over the handlebars and I just went scooting in the street. Knee rash, I got some on my shoulder, but it's definitely worth it. I'm taking y'all. What? Anyways, I was gonna say, I'm taking y'all on my peaceful morning stroll, but it's not too peaceful anymore. You think my daddy was a mechanic? Every morning that I can, I ride my bike around town. I wake up, I'll grab a cup of coffee, and then I'll go ride my bike around town. It's just a good refresher. It helps me think about the day, what I'm gonna do, and it helps me kind of map out a game plan. But I have something else planned for today's video. It's very, very special. I posted a video about an aircraft carrier about a year ago, and there have been lots and lots of questions, so I'm gonna walk through it. We're just gonna kind of explore around the video a little bit. So let's go back to the crib and we'll get started. All right, so first of all, if you have not seen this video, stop the current video, look below. I will link it in the description. This will uh, kind of help you understand what I'm doing. But uh, we're gonna go through this video. I'm gonna answer some questions and kind of fill in the blanks. This original video just rolled over 100,000 views 100,799 right now actually. And I just wanna say thank you to everybody who watched it, everybody that subscribed. Uh, thanks for all the love. You know, I feel like a celebrity. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, but yeah, that's incredible, 100,000 views. That's, that's something for me because I'm just a peasant. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll this video. I think lots of people wonder what it's like to watch the sun rise and set from the corners of the earth. So I had to make this intro. Lots of people um, like dramatic to kind of like really pull in the viewer you know what I'm saying but for the past 180 days I watched the sun this part right here I was on the fantail the, the fantail is where everybody goes and like just hangs out and just gets away from work and hides from their bosses really so you'll see a jet that's about to land um, the pilots would take off from the carrier and they would prep they would practice takeoffs and landings so they would just do a circle and then come right back. This is our story. I recorded this intro um, at like three or four o'clock in the morning. And that was the only time that people weren't awake and like doing stuff in the compartment. So the MAs woke up a little early than everyone else because our shifts were shorter. Those coveralls that you see, they're actually very comfortable. They're easy to put on. It's a one piece, so you just slip right in it and it's it's done. It's really easy to get ready. The clips that you see from the helicopter were given to me by the media team. So shout out to the media team. Thanks. Now the ceilings were low and the hallways were small. So if you're a tall guy, I would say like above six. Foot, you're gonna hit your head a few times. I'm 6'3 and I hit my head so many times. Okay, right here, this helicopter, this they're bringing on supplies. This is a RAS, replenishment at sea. This could be anything from mail to Gatorade to like Chex Mix, stuff from the ship store, toothbrushes, anything that we need. Gyms got so packed, I felt like there are three gyms and they're packed pretty much all the time. So the food was actually pretty decent. You'll see me here eating meatballs and spaghetti. It wasn't really like this. Okay, this is called a midrats meal. This is kind of where they clean out the freezers and give you everything at 12 uh, for the midrats, the people that work midnights. But otherwise, we were getting chicken breast, steak sometimes, even the lobster tails you saw on. The water's not really brown, also, um, for the most part. About a week later, we pulled alongside another ship to replenish our food and mail. Mail call is one of the biggest things on the ship because you get mail from your family, you get stuff that you order from Amazon, and right here, this is during a RAS. I was always voluntold to go down to the freezer 
and uh, and to help haul the food. So we were on a break, like a 15 minute break, and I was plundering. I was hungry, and I was eating pies, dude. I was I was getting all kinds of food on there, which you're not really supposed to do, but everybody did it. Just don't tell anybody. These pies were so good after a long raz, like skipping lunch, skipping dinner. Every day we woke up and pretty much did the same thing, and it got repetitive. This is my friend Nathan, he's also an MA. Jesse Francisco, Galvin. This part right here, it's hard for me to watch because I'm, I'm not this serious in real life. Like, I was really trying to make this storyline uh, dramatic and I think I did you know I just kind of cringe when I watch this part I don't know I don't know why I was inside of my squadron compartment which is like a tiny room but in those squadron compartments they have internet this is my good friend Tony he's a beast on the Rubik's Cube but let's not forget about port Port visits. This is definitely my favorite thing about deployment, hands down. This is Guam right here. Um, depending on your Liberty card and how well you behave as a sailor and how well you have your qualifications and everything, they will give you a phase three, which means you can stay overnight and drink. This is South Korea, which was an awesome place. These are my drone shots. I brought my drone, so I have a little. Learn things. Enjoy life. I have a little drone. I fold up, and that's the one that I took with me. Hawaii, we South Korea again. Singapore. So I want to pause this real quick. This is Singapore. The pool behind me is the world's largest infinity pool, which means um, that the pool. For those of you who don't know what an infinity pool is, the pool kind of just rolls off the side, and it looks like. The edge of the pool takes you like it's hard to explain. Anyways, Google Infinity Pool. And don't forget that when you get the opportunity. So, swim call. Jump. This is a very because you may not get um, popular question I get asked. How long was the drop? Well, it ranges from like 40 to 60 feet because the swells out in the middle of the ocean they're so big that. They uh, the the waves roll up and they roll down and then when they roll up it's probably about a thirty or forty foot drop and then when they go down it's probably between a fifty and sixty foot drop. That's how big the waves are. And this water is so clear that you could see the entire hull of the carrier. That was cool too. This is off the coast of Hawaii. We took this little bus all around Guam and it was fun. By the way, I did not get to fly in a jet, unfortunately. The media team gave me this. And you can see a little hook right here on the jet. It snags a cable. That's how they stop. They, just, they don't just put their brakes on. This is in Guam. Drone. Had to get the dramatic sunset in the background. So this is just us goofing around the fantail as always. I think we were working nights, or this is right after we got off of work. Um, March 4th of last year, I was just kind of documenting a lot of stuff. Uh, I have a lot of clips that I didn't put in this video. Um, so maybe one day I will remake it. But anyways, that's pretty much the end of this video. Um, perception is not always reality so the things you see in this in this video you know it's deployment is not all cupcakes and roses is that what they say anyways um, there are some hardships like being away from family I missed a couple of weddings when I was on deployment in the video I make it out to seem just really cool and awesome and it is don't get me wrong but there are little bits and pieces that are bad like my music in the gym, 
expired on my phone because you do not have internet on your phones out there. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no cellular service or anything. So my music all expired. I had no music. Um, that was one thing that, that just ate me up because I love music. And internet. So there are compartments on the ship that have internet, but people are very selfish with it. If you are attached to a squadron, more than likely you will get to go in there and check your email. I was in there all the time on Facebook, like just checking my stuff every single day, talking to fa friends and family. Um, let me try to think of something else. It gets really hot and really cold on that ship. So in your compartment, you'll have maybe 150 or 200 people. And when they're, at, when they're in there sleeping, it can get very hot. But when everybody's gone and you're sleeping, it can be, get very cold. I remember one time it was like 55 or 60 degrees in our compartment. And then the AC went out and it was like 95 to 100 degrees. So the Navy is really what you make it. I mean, if you're a positive person and you continue to stay positive, it's going to be a great experience. I consider myself a very positive person, but I do admit there are negatives to the Navy, just like there are negatives about everything, every kind of job. Um, the reason that a lot of people complain is because they're held under that contract. Okay, If you um, just set your mind to, to stay positive, then you're going to be positive and you're going to love your time in the Navy. I mean... I'm sitting here, I live in a beautiful city, Long Beach, and I, I get paid, you know, to do something that I love. That's my aspect on it. Um, and I hope some of you in the Navy, you know, feel the same way. I know not everybody hates the military out there. So, anyways, guys, I really appreciate you, t I really appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. I'm up in my video game. I'm at two videos per week now. So, it's going to be a good experience. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be a party. And uh, once again, thanks for all the love and support. Guys, I'm out. See you next time. Bye.